And ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your, your day and, uh, and your lives to, uh, to spend some time with us here at Northeastern State University on this very special May 1st. Uh, on behalf of uh, my family and uh, myself, uh, Suzanne, uh, we are just so appreciative uh, of you being here. We are honored, uh, certainly, by your presence. And I want to start by thanking the committee, which is legion, that made this possible. There are so many people who have planned and executed for so long, and I know there's going to be a collective sigh of relief when I finish these remarks and we begin to, to close up. Uh, but let me tell you that without their diligence, without their sense of dedication, without their sense of collaboration, this would not have happened. Uh, I was holding out to have this outside, and um, at 9 o'clock this morning, uh, they were coming into, my good colleagues were coming into the office just wondering when I was going to finally let go of the fact that we couldn't have it outside. But, uh, <laughs> so we almost issued you umbrellas, but, but nevertheless. I'm very pleased to let you know that uh, my family is here with me today. My mother, uh, Mary Betts, and my brother, Tom, my son, Nick, daughter, Sarah, and Nick's fiance, Jesse. And we're so pleased that they can all be here. Thank you, Mom, for coming so far, and, and Tom from Seattle, Washington. I also want to thank the Russo Board of Regents, the distinguished guests of the platform, and particularly uh, my chancellor and, and, um, and, um, and fellow academic, uh, Chancellor Johnson. I'm so pleased that, to be working with you. My colleagues from the presidents around the state and around the country, it's a great honor to have you here. It's a, it's a humbling experience. You came from all over Oklahoma. You came from the University of Wisconsin River Falls, my last home, uh, the University of Wisconsin Superior. Uh, from Life University, uh, from Arkansas, the University of Arkansas, Fort Smith, and many other places. You have to know what, a, what an incredible feeling it is to have men and women of this caliber come and, and spend their time because they are as busy as they can possibly be. But there is a camaraderie here that exists, and it really shows itself at, at times like this, and I'm so appreciative. Over the last couple of days, alumni from around the country and around the state who we have not seen for a while found their way back home. And that's been particularly gratifying. And one of them were rep represented today through uh, Peggy Glenn Summit. But there were num large numbers. And again, it reminds me of those that survived the classes and, and the journeys we took over those 23 years. And I, I really thank you. Uh, for the, the member communities, our host communities, Tahlequah, our historic home, uh, Muskogee and Broken Arrow, uh, we exist to work in partnership with you and, and your cooperation with us and our collaboration it means so much and then the number of dear friends that are here as well. I particularly want to thank the faculty and the staff and the students of our three campuses. You know, the, the faculty are the life force of any institution. There's no, there's no question about it. But you can't, you can't proceed with just one part of the Troika. You need the faculty, you need the staff, and you need the students. And when they work in a kind of harmony, the opportunities that are created are purely magical. And those magic moments we don't forget because they happen in our lives and they draw us back into this work time and time again. And of course, I want to finally thank Suzanne, the compass in my life. Uh, for more reasons than I can count, I thank you, and you'll always be the First Lady. It was about two months ago that we stood here, just a short distance before our icon of education, Seminary Hall, and ushered in Founders Day. It was a little bit different weather. It was 82 degrees and the wind was blowing. In fact, it almost blew us off the rostrum. But it was one of, those, one of those wonderful moments that you probably remember for a long time. And if you were there, it was a combination of, um, of air and ideas and, and wit. Uh, everyone, I think, that was there felt the past uh, wafting around them. And the facade of, of Seminary Hall reminding us of the 163-year commitment to education that is enshrined right here as we looked at Centennial Plaza and the new statue of Sequoia, and we, we realized that there is so much history. We are, re, we are rediscovering who we are even as we move, move into the future. This is a place that is sacred ground for Oklahoma education. And if you're from another state, I have to tell you that organized, formal teaching and learning was alive here before anywhere else in the state and in most of this region of the country, and even before there was an Oklahoma. And I've always found that to be incredibly invigorating and amazingly gratifying. I think that we have such deep roots of teaching, learning, and serving here. And it's a process of not just knowing those roots, but re-emphasizing and um, replanting those roots that makes it possible for us to do our job. We've been told uh, time and again this morning about the connections between the Cherokee Nation 
and Northeastern State University. And what always amazed me when I look back at those years, I think about that there was a rooted conviction, a conviction that was simply that people could, in fact, shape their future, that society could grow and be nurtured and prosper through education and through the creativity and energy and the persistence and the collaboration of its graduates, that values and principles at that time were guiding lights through the uncertain years and the unforeseen challenges. But it wasn't his education that aids us to sprout what we'd heard earlier, the roots and the wings for succeeding generations. But today is also a day for stories, a day for faces, to remember rites of passage, cascading memories, snapshots in time for your Northeastern. Some of our students that are here, and I'm so excited to have you here, you are in fact creating your own memories, and we hope that today will be part of it. For others that have been connected with this institution for 60, 70, and more years, we hope that this particular day finds a place in the cavalcade of your memories. Uh, because NSU really is an intertwined collection of people's stories. It's stories about persistence and determination, of true grit, of lives devoted to teaching and caring, and tales of individuals, families, communities, and entire peoples. This day, is in fact part of an enduring memory of the power of learning. The power of learning that changes lives and changes states. In many ways, I believe our stories are in fact uniquely connected. Now you'd already heard from Regent Gordon about the famous quotation from Governor Haskell that this institution in its earliest days was called the small lamp of enlightenment surrounded by a, a sea of darkness. And Governor Haskell the next day, the next day wrote a letter to a woman here in town, and he was describing what it meant to create Northeastern Normal, where the Cherokee National Female Seminary used to be. And he said this, assured that if the people of Oklahoma continue the same proper spirit that inspired the Cherokees to create this institution, it will be all through the future, as all during the past, a benefit to humanity and the greatest credit to the state. And then he closed, and no other institution of this state will ever be able to found its claim to recognition upon a history of greater usefulness nor grander past than Northeastern state normal. And what a beginning for Oklahoma higher education in this region. And now we stand here today at that vortex, that tipping point that separates the past and the future, a future linked in this place, this land, and this people who have carried the devotion of teaching and learning from Tahlequah now to Muskogee and to Broken Arrow. This is the time for us to chart the second century and to live the promise of education that was articulated those many years ago in 1909 and as far back as 1851. And it's our time to write this story together. Well, it's clear that the time that we've entered is not an easy one. There are challenges of disruptive and disconcerting change. There's an age of called of instability, of upheaval, of more questions than answers, where familiar patterns used to be and pathways seem no longer clear. But this is clear. It is clear that we cannot accomplish this work alone. No one can. Not Northeastern State, not the state of Oklahoma, not the United States of America. The call, in fact, is for a fundamental reframing of our local, national, and global structures, our processes, and our mindset. It's a time for unprecedented integration and collaboration to meet what only can be called the grand uncertainties of tomorrow. We must find common ground because we're entering into a transformative phase of human history together. For many years, this institution has been a learning hub of Eastern Oklahoma, and I pledge to you today that this is a time for us to be bold, bold on our expectations of ourselves while we hold one another accountable. I'm inspired, and I think we all are inspired, by the sense of vision and courage that created the male and female seminaries in 1846 and Northeastern Normal in 1909. Those good people combined pragmatism and vision. We must now address real needs, and in doing so, create the future that lives only in our dreams. So here we are now in that second century, sometimes I'll call the global century, where we must live the promise 
of the women and men who started all of this for us. As was said earlier by several speakers, we are here to cultivate, sustain, and embrace a culture of learning. We believe it is incredibly powerful. We are exhorted by our president, President Obama, to be about the work of remaking America. NSU is a prime regional partner in realizing the promise that we all wish to attain, a healthier, happier life. We will, do, we will together address the demands of the new age, we will nurture imagination and creativity, and we will link discovery in common purpose connected to public purpose and to service leadership. We will, in fact, walk the talk when it comes to a culture of learning. In the second century, at least in the opening years, we're going to speak and work to attain sustainable community development. And what I mean by this is we're focused on our environment and beyond to the quality of life for our citizens. We can help grow sustainable citizens by becoming a partner with communities and the regions we serve. There's environmental stewardship, there's education, there's health, well-being, and social justice. And these are all emerging expressions of what we mean when we talk about sustainable communities. It can only be accomplished in a collaborative fashion. As has been articulated so persuasively and appropriately by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities, we are in fact, and we do not forget, we are stewards of this place and these precious resources, human and environmental, local and global. But in order to do it, we must in fact cultivate leadership. And so we dedicate ourselves today, rededicate ourselves to building the next generation of citizens and leaders and to create a culture of civic engagement powered by a deep-seated spirit of service. We are educating citizens and leaders, inspiring them, mentoring them, and sculpting them so that they will become those civic leaders, diplomats, global thinkers, problem solvers, oh yes, and great neighbors. We are creating the next Oklahoma. We know we are and we are ready for the task. We believe that we are a vital ingredient. All of higher education is a vital ingredient in society's promise to build a brighter future. We are also dedicating ourselves in the second century to pursuing global literacy and global engagement. Complementary capacities to thrive in this hyper-connected world. We will bring the world to NSU, take NSU to the world both virtually and practically. And we won't try to leave anyone behind because we believe we must intensify our pursuit of inclusiveness as a prime duty for our university. Our state, our communities simply cannot afford to waste a single idea, a single aspiration, a single great thought, or a single volunteer. And so NSU says that we will serve, as we have in the past, as a hub, as a nucleus in this region for learning, for leading, and for serving. We are building our capacities together to become a pool of informed and committed leaders intent on serving the needs of our communities. We are destined by our design to be the most collaborative institution we can possibly be. We want to find partners in the public and private sector, other institutions of any ilk, from the, the most fundamental first teachers of our people right to the highest research institutions because we can't afford not to be linked. How can we possibly grow a group of future researchers if we don't have great institutions at the, at the common level, at the secondary level, <clears throat> and higher education level? All of us must be in sync, in lockstep, and in coordination. We're also going to become what we should have been for a long time, and what we are occasionally, and that is a place where First Nations, where indigenous peoples and where native peoples come and meet each other. We have the largest Native American student population in the country. We have a wonderful group of faculty and staff who have Native background. Um, we revel in the notion that we are in and of the Native peoples of our country, but there are Native peoples in other countries as well, and I can't think of a more welcoming community for a Native person, be they from this country or another, a more welcoming place to gather, to study, to research, to consider, to debate and brainstorm, to create and collaborate, and to imagine what their future might be than Northeastern State University. And we're also going to work very hard to take care of one another and to establish this 
institution as an irresistible place to work together and to learn together. What we will focus on, ultimately, is building the culture of learning. The culture of learning, you've heard it several times today. And for us, and for me, it embodies creativity, discovery, imagination, adaptability, tolerance, and collaboration now set in a global framework. There are many people that are fearful of the changes going on in our world, and we hear about it daily. In fact, I've, I'm sort of a news hound, and I've actually gotten to the point where I've stopped listening. And the reason is, is because I'm finding myself being absolutely bombarded, not with information, but with an attempt to make me nervous about what I'm already nervous about. <laughs> but our response to these, these challenges of change that are so dominant in our time, I think, is the appropriate one through the culture of learning, and that is, we simply trumpet, and not so simply trumpet, the power of learning. The power of learning that's exemplified in that edifice of Seminary Hall. The power of learning that's a passion of life. It's a lifestyle. It assures us, I believe, that we need not fear change, that the power of learning actually prepares us for change, to direct it in order to serve our needs. Our, our personal needs, our family's needs, community, country, and globe. And I think we believe, must do is we must prepare our students to swim in that global sea and to swim in the sea of uncertainty. And the way we do that is to give them the tools. I believe we must offer them confidence based on their capacities to learn, to adapt, and to learn again as a life habit. Their confidence, I believe, will be rooted in their competence and in their collaboration. So here we are, standing before you today, 100 years young, ready for the second 100, and trumpeting the notions of leading, learning, and serving. I think it's important for you to understand why we come here and do this work. I think we come here to do this work because we believe that we can, each in our own way, make a substantive difference in someone else's life. I think we plan, I think we collaborate, and I think we celebrate the successes of our students when they come back to us because we have great hope in them. We laud them not simply for their accomplishments, but we praise them and are gratified by who they have become. In this way, individual by individual, community by community, graduate by graduate, I believe we leave, as Jack Kaufman taught us a long time ago, that woodpile a little bit higher than we found it. And for those of you in education, you know that when they come home, those moments are the stuff of pure joy. So ladies and gentlemen, you have honored me with this opportunity to be a servant leader once again in Oklahoma. And I'm not brand new at the job, I've been on for 10 months. And I can tell you that uh, when people ask if I'm settled in, the answer is way past settled. But I want to tell you today that I take this position as we write the next chapter of Living Our Promise. And I take it with the same spirit that I believe was handed to the first Cherokee woman and man that stood here and decided that education was an absolute essential ingredient in their success and the future of their people. I gratefully accept your charge secure in the knowledge that we will chart this second century only one way, together. Thank you.